Um, so each entry, okay, have a accuracy entry point. Uh, so create a new plugin type accuracy score. Score, or yeah. Um, have a score method, method which takes um, whose first input is the okay. So each entry will have a have a score coroutine. So somebody stop me right now if any of this doesn't sound like a good plan or has any comments, questions, or concerns. So uh, actually, I was thinking like uh, maybe we can like wrap this. Uh, uh, sklearn dot metrics, and then like we can pass the uh, the data from which we can we want to get the accuracy thing. Um. You mean we'll yeah, wrap like, we'll wrap a like, bunch of these too. Yeah, like yeah. sklearn dot metrics. We will wrap all of it, and then like we can pass the data here, and we will get the. That sounds accuracy. good. Yeah, so we'll probably do that. I mean, we'll probably add these to the scikit models. We'll probably add these accuracy scoring the meth the metrics in here, and um, we'll add the wrappers around these to the scikit models plugin um, to the scikit models package. Um, uh, does that sound right? Does that sound like what you're saying? Oh uh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, maybe just this should just be accuracy. Ooh, ooh, wow, got this. Okay. Create a new plugin type accuracy. Each entry will have a config, um, a score, coaching method. First, or let's see. Second input is the same as the output in the predict method. Um, first input is the a list of feature names we're scoring. Or wait, let's see. No. Yeah, let's see. An async iterator of record objects. Um, so, and then the other thing we need is that We've got to have like you know what the hell features were we working on here. So second input is list. Actually, yeah, second input is list of features. Um, uh, because I think I mean for now all our models predict one feature, but um, you know who knows maybe we're going to have a model in the future that predicts multiple features. Um, actually, I think um, Himachi, some of those does NLP models have multiple prediction. Outputs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So second input is a list of features that, and how would that work with this? Mm, well, I think that it should should be fine. It should be fine. Okay, because all you're working from now, I mean, at this point, all you have to work from is like all, all you can't you can't work from anything within the model right you're only working from like you don't have the models config or anything um 
So you're just looking at, you just have the list of features that were, or well, yeah, this should work fine. Yeah, this should work fine. Because you're just going to look at the record feature data and then the record prediction data um, for the value. Um, okay. List of features that um, were, we did prediction feature. Uh, let's see, should they be features? Yeah, they should probably be feature classes. Um, they're like instances of the feature list of feature instances. That way we don't lose typing information. We did prediction on um, Okay, this is great. Oh, this is big, big, big progress today. Um, okay, and then um, the method will uh, look at the record dot features uh, for the features. We're trying to, we predicted, and the um, record.predictions, and return, a, a, its assessment of the accuracy. All right, this is a key thing that I think that we will really make I think this is like a key, a key piece of our library that we were missing. Um, okay. Okay. It's a nice, nice architectural related issue. We haven't had one of those in a while. Okay, so. Okay, so and then we're going to break this down into um, some sub sub issues. So uh, we're going to need one something in the um, accuracy. Um, so create some accuracy scoring method within the standard or the main package. Um, so we so we need to implement some and at least at least one accuracy. Actually this is sort of like part of this one really because we won't be able to do that one without um, without doing this. Um, So, right, because if we go and we're going to go switch over all the models, um, we're going we're gonna to have to replace their accuracy with something. So we will need to um, modify the high-level accuracy function. Um, we will need to, need to implement at least one accuracy function from scratch or accuracy at least one of these from scratch. I don't think this should be too hard. Um, uh, within Package um, so that we can use it for testing and examples and the like. Um, okay, and then the next issue we're going to create here is to track um, um, feature request. Uh, we need to uh, accuracy. Scikit um, 
add or so wrap scalearn dot metrics uh, methods uh, within accuracy plugins. Um, add these to uh, model slash scikit. Okay, this is a big thing that we did today. Okay. Um, it's probably going to be very, very, very similar to how we did the um, the the uh, the scikit models. Only basically, we're just going to like you know throw out. You're gonna, you're, it's basically going to be like that numpy create config and then we throw out anything that doesn't have a default value for the config and we use we use things that do have default values within the config um, okay um, let's see so damn it I can't believe I forget to start the recording okay uh, um, all right, so for now, just do the, um, you know, do the accuracy score. Um, right, um, and then uh, we came up with... these two issues. Those may not make it into this coming release, but uh, maybe they will. Who knows? That would be awesome if they did. All right. Um, okay. Does that answer your question on what to do there? Uh, yes. Sweet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. No problem. Thank you. Um, okay. So, all right. I'm glad we're all, so that was, I'm glad we all had that discussion because we're all very involved in that, the outcome of that. So does it, does anybody have anything else they want to say on that? All right. Um, all right, cool. So if you do, if anybody has any realizations, let's comment in the issue. Um, let's see, so... So let's see, uh, from today's meeting, if anyone has any more feedback on the creation of accuracy scoring classes, please comment in. Okay. Um, okay, and then Saksham. The more image operations, so basically that looks like a, let's see, let me pull this down here. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so the directory source, you said can you can you uh, yeah I had a question with directory yeah. source too, mm -hmm. so can you open that yeah all 
All right. Where am I? John, I will leave. Uh, yep. I have a bit of a Yep. No worries. All right. Yeah. If anybody needs to drop, that's that's a okay. See you. Have a good one. Yeah. Thanks. thanks. Uh, can you open the directory source in the main package? All right. All right. Uh, like here, I have uh, set the keys as file names. Let's see, keys as file names. Um, yeah, okay. But uh, I had a doubt, like if in they they're like multiple folders, like labeled folders, mm -hmm. label named folders. So if each folder has images uh, named like one dot png, two dot png, uh -huh. so won't that conflict with the uh, keys and everything? Um, let me just read what you did here. So, what is base name here? Wait, oh, oh, uh, I see. So it mind. takes only the last name and not the whole path of the image. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right, do we have test cases that are working for this? Uh, yeah. All right. Test source dot test underscore DIR. Uh, it's tests. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And this is the issue we're currently facing. Okay. Yes. So... So why is it not working? Okay, so yeah, this is my question: is why is it not working in the CI? Uh, because in test require it's dffml config png and it takes the I think it just takes the official package from PyPy. Okay, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so when you do this. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, no, yeah, you don't want to add this. You never want to add any DFFML packages to here. Um, okay. Yeah, so there you go. So that'll fix that. Um, um, because they're already installed when you run the main package. Um, well, okay, so they're installed only if you do. You have to say... Um, so... Um, if you need, okay, so if you, this is something that we should document. Um, uh, um, testing. Um, we also had the issue with the shorthand name stuff. Shorthand name. Operations. Oh, yeah. We talk. yeah. Is that still an issue or was that just like things need to be it's, regenerated? Yeah, it's it was just a first time issue because it was uh, I just created the package at that time. Okay, so is this Maybe we probably need to like document that under the new operations tutorials? Yeah, I think uh, like if we are adding a new op new uh, a new package operation package, then uh, we need to do uh, we need to uh, do examples and everything in a separate PR so that it doesn't conflict. Because now then I have to go and change the MNIST example. So wait, but why didn't it wait? Um, 
it was giving the whole name with dffml underscore uh, underscore image operations and uh, dot uh, then resize and everything instead of only giving resize dot inputs dot data okay uh... Okay. Yeah, I see. I see here. Okay. Um, okay. And that's the other thing is we really should be taking, we really, since we have the create command and we're not hand editing these files, we should really just show a diagram here um, instead of a, instead of the YAML file, because there's really no point in showing the YAML file if it's just generated from this command. Um, uh, yeah, I was thinking about that because now that, uh, now that the FFML uh, data flow create command I just posted makes mm. a config YAML file of more than 200 lines. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, and then this command here, right, like this would really be just resize. Right. Yes. These are all just going to be just be resize. Okay, yeah, okay, why, wait a minute. Oh, it still works because, wait a minute, why does it still work? It wasn't working for me yesterday. But the tutorial is tested. Tutorials test run, so why did the test pass? Why did the test pass? Um, you know what I'm saying? Right, like how did uh, yeah, it work? That's weird. Yeah, that's what I was asking yesterday. Ah, okay, now I understand. All right. Actually, okay, uh, John, just yeah. a question. Uh, uh, yeah, Sakshim, you can ask. Uh, you can go first. I'll ask later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, when we export, there's a link parameter, right? What happens if we set link as true? Say what? When we export that flow extra to like YAML or something, what uh, there's a parameter called link, right? Oh what yeah. What does that do? All right. Um, oh, linked basically puts the definitions at the top. So if you if the so if you don't say linked, all of these will get reproduced under each operation. Okay. Yeah, so okay, let's okay, okay. Okay. That. This might be a good thing for the data flow tutorials. For the data flow tutorials, uh, what does linked do? Um, also, you're, uh, you're moving the DFFML config PNG from the setup.py uh -huh. and I didn't add it initially and it was throwing an error that DFFML config PNG was not found. Yeah, so uh, that's that's the next thing I was about to say is, um, um, so, sorry, so if you uh, uh, specify linked equals false definitions will will be their full object within the exported um, exported um, uh, operation uh, otherwise if true they are with stored within the definitions uh, key of the exported data flow and reference so uh, where would name. be a place where we use this um basically if you wanted to change the definition so so the reason why is if you wanted to change something in the definition you would have to go through and change every instance of it within every operation so if one operation right if we have like a, a linked data flow that was you know like say we did auto flow right and just all the, for example, like with should I, if with the should I data flow, here, let's see. Um, uh, 
okay, with the should I data flow, right, we have um, the, uh, this is, let's go to the original one. Okay. Um, yeah, so with the should I data flow, we have this, um, let's see. We have PyPy package JSON goes to PyPy package contents and safety check. Um, and and uh, and so if you look at the code, where's the code? Yeah, so if you look at the code, PyPy package context is defined. Oh, no, snooze. That always gets me. Um, so the input is auto discovered here as the URL, right? So we just specify the, the output is going to run bandit, right? And then we use the input here, or wait, wait a minute. Um, Pipe package contents, the input is the URL. Okay, yeah, so we're going to use our package JSON outputs the URL, right? And so basically, right, so in the case where we're using definitions from other operations like this, right, rather than redefining them all, then we'd have to go through in the exported YAML and change every single one of these, right? in each place. And if I didn't change them, now the whole thing's going to be weird, right? It's not going to work correctly, right? So if you do it linked, then it's always going to reference it by name, which means you only have to change the information about the definition in one place, right? So say I wanted to make one of these resources locked, then I just change it, yeah, up top. Nice, okay. Um, so, yeah, of course. Um, let's see. Uh-oh, I think we just realized that this might not actually clean up that directory. Um, okay, let's make an issue for that, um, because we didn't actually specify the input is the same. Uh, okay, crap, I missed that. Issues. Okay, should I, uh, Let's just, uh, uh, we need to make it so that the uh, directory input comes is the same definition as um, pipe package contents run for this guy. Actually, and that that sort of yeah definition uh, needs updating for directory input. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and then what we're talking about? So setup. Okay. So we had a few things here. We were talking about. Um, Okay, we were talking about this, and we were talking about why does the test pass? Um, add pillow. That's test dependency. Okay. Um, and then, so, oops, why did I do that? Okay. Um, and then the thing that I was going to say here is, um, 
we need to document how um, if you're writing a test um, writing tests so when you're writing a test if you need to use anything or a if if your test is within the main package aka tests um, and you need to use a plugin within your test uh, you should subclass from integration CLI test case and this is what we we're talking about a lot do you guys remember um, last Friday I was saying that we really need to make this the base class for everything and this is why um, because you know then we'll end up with everything having a temporary directory and we'll end up with you know the fact that we can do these required plugins um, for example uh, if you need um, uh, get grip Okay, yeah, required plugins, so. Um, yeah, so for example, in this one, we're testing, um, testing some of the data flow commands, and so we use the YAML config loader, and we use should I, and we're also gonna do some stuff with the Git features, and therefore we set the required plugins to um, you know, this list of required plugins, and then we can do things like load the data flow from should I, um, because it's installed. Um, well, yeah. Um, and uh, you can also do things like um, get, get, God, wow, get grep required, oops. Yeah, you can say at the beginning of the test, you can say, um, you know, these are the required plugins for this test. So for the scikit classification, or well, these ones, they don't really need it because they're in there. Um, okay, yeah, see, like this one in high level, when we test predict, we need, we require the scikit model. And so what this does is through the first, it lets us, so this lets us write some of the tests don't require the plugins and some of them do. And that way we can run through the main, basically the first time we run the CI test for the main package, we're going to run all of the tests and we're not going to care if any got skipped, right? And if it, what this is going to do is it's just going to skip the test case if that plugin's not installed. Um, and so then what what we do is then we run the we we install every single plugin um and then we run the test again and if any got skipped then we say okay now there's a problem right um because we want to have something that ensures that we want to run the test twice because we want to some of our tests will require plugins right because just to, to test the functionality we're going to need that and some of them um some of them will will not um, right because we have to make sure that we're that the library works without the plugins installed right um, so we have to run them twice um, so um, let's just sort of like write this up in here so code block okay so i'll subclass from integration cli test case mm -hmm. and uh, self dot required dffml config png right uh yeah so yeah so you would do dfml config png then with a png if you needed to test something where you had to load a a PNG, you do blank, right? So, so we'll add that to the docs here. Um, 
Um, so yeah, you'll want that um, in the in the that will fix probably your CI run here. Um, but that's not what we were here for. Um, let's see. Uh, and then we also need to. So let's make an issue for the MNIST to replace. Let's replace these YAML files. Um, so yeah, the data the diagram command is running when you're not uh, piping with. DFS oh, is that create. is that still we're still that's still the issue here, right? The diagram command. No, I just tried it without piping with the uh, data flow create command, and it's working fine. All right, so only with pipe is it failing? Is what you're saying? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, and it doesn't like. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. Okay, so resize. Okay, that's interesting. Resize was not found in blank. Okay. Have you installed the operations plugin? I think I just did. Oh, no, I didn't. And so, yeah, I can install config loader PNG. Good catch. There we go. Okay. Um, so, yeah, let's update this command here. Um, okay. Um, and then we were going to diagram it. So, dffml, data flow. Diagram simple. Oh, config JSON or YAML. It's config loader. Ah, it is now, yes, thank you. We gotta change that to dot two. Okay, so yeah, that works for me too, so let's see. That's great. Let's just check what it made. Okay. Let's just check what it looks like here. Um, psh, what the hell is that? Um, okay. Resize, multiply. Hmm. But this isn't what. This is the old one. We're not talking. This is not the new one that we're saying that there's a problem with. Um, That's not the one. And we have this mysterious um, hash here. I think it's resize dot inputs dot data. Yeah. Which is not read correctly. It's not read correctly. Okay, so we've got some issues there. Uh, okay, yeah. So that stuff needs to get fixed. Um, so let's see. Um, I guess we're just gonna have to let's just open an issue for the MNIST tutorial and say. Um, that we need to we need to update this. Um, so um, so usage docs usage mnist need to update. Uh, so. Remove, so let's see, what are we doing here? We're going to remove YAML files, or replace, replace YAML files uh, with diagrams, um, and uh, re uh, uh, give updated uh, create data flow create command with uh, shorthand for resize. Um, and I think that's, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Okay. So, all right, okay. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, uh, you were looking at the issue, of, uh, doubt for the directory source with the directory key. Directory source, yeah. Okay, so. Oops. Um, all right. Uh, 
Alright. So, um, oh, that's not what I wanted. Alright, so, first off, um, you've already got, um, you've already got, um, oops, uh, folders, config.foldername.joinpathlabel, so for label and config labels, okay, if config labels equals unlabeled, del unlabeled labeled. is uh, default for cell.config.labels, okay, so config.feature, feature data, Okay, and then you say label is label. Okay, so um, so I believe what you want is more of something like this, right? Because you're going to do, um, let's see. So, okay, so config labels is unlabeled. Okay, join past label. So, my guess at what you want. Okay, so I think it makes a lot of sense to have this basically be like, okay, each directory is the name of the feature, right? I think that makes more sense, right? Because if each, if each, you're saying the labels, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, the label, oh, wait a minute. Okay, so you're saying, you're saying, so basically my doubt was that uh, in keys, like I've written string file name. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, I've written that so that we can merge a CSV source containing the label names. Yeah. So that was working. I tried that, but the thing is that if in if in lab uh, if the if the directory source is labeled like labeled fold uh, folders are there, mm -hmm. then and in labeled folders, this file names uh, in each label folder is one dot png till hundred dot png. So won't that create an issue? Because then, uh, if there are ten labels, then there will be ten uh, records with same keys as uh, one dot png. Well, so the key, but the key is the file name, right? Uh, or, yes. Okay. So. So. Okay. What does the input data for these models look usually look like? Like, what is a model that you're looking at? So you basically okay. So let me just let me just recap on what we're doing here because I want to I want to make sure that I understand what what you're what you're doing. Um, so you were going to take a classification model like a scikit classification model, and you were going to take these directories of labeled images, right where the, it's just a list of images in numbers, you know, one through n in each directory, and the directory, the parent directory of each of these images is what image it is. So, like plane, horse, cat, right? Um, is that that's correct so far? Oh uh, yes. Okay. And so now you're going to, you want to use those images, or you want to use that the, the parent directory of the the plane, horse, cat as the directory that is going to be the directory source. Um, that's the base directory there, right? Like there is a directory dataset slash train. Uh -huh. So in that there will be uh, label folders, like mm -hmm. there will be five label folders, for example, and each label folder will have 100 images. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what if uh, all the label folders have 100 images and all of them are named uh, yeah, they're all named the same thing. Yeah, so um, in that case, let's see what might be the best way to do this. Um, so first, when the key being as zero to n, uh, like yeah. in cell dot n, same, but I that think, but that would not help for merging with CSV source. 
I think that is what you a... really want here. Yeah. You, okay. So then you're going to merge with CSV source. Is it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. That's so. What do you mean when you say merge with CSV source? Like, uh, if there is unlabeled data, mm -hmm. if there if there are no label folders and they are just a number of images, mm -hmm. so uh, according to that if condition, the label uh, will be deleted from features. But if there is a CSV, uh, sometimes there is a CSV source with unlabeled data, uh -huh. giving uh, uh, file names and labels, mapping them. Uh -huh. So if we if if I merge, uh, if I merge them, if I give two sources in the CLI, they get merged using yeah. the merge mm -hmm. command. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. I think you want, I think, okay. I think you want the record key to be like a hash of the file contents in this case. Um, because the record key is a unique thing representing this record, right? And in a CSV so file, it's just each row is the index, right? So the thing is, in uh, normally data sets, uh, when data sets are not uh, uh, into label folders, they are they are, they are given a CSV file with them, which are, which have their uh, file names and labels. Mm -hmm. So if we give a hash, then how will we merge the CSV source? So you're saying if or, I if I so if you give if you give at the same time you give a directory source and you give a CSV source is what you're yes. talking about here, okay? And you want to merge, but why? I don't understand. So this is the case. For supervised classification. So, but it sounds like this is the case to me where we need to add that parameter to sources where we tell it not to merge the records because or else you're just going because right by default the source sources goes through and it merges all the records right so it takes the first source and it says okay is there any more feature data for this record in any of the other sources right and but it sounds like in this case you have some you have a list of uh, images in a CSV file with their labels and you also have a directory full of images with their labels right and you just want both of them you want it all right you don't want to merge right you want it all to for training right actually there are like two uh, I did it with two ways right if there if the images are segregated into label folders or when they're not when they're not then and if they are given a csv file then we can uh, use both both the sources okay um okay sorry say that again uh, so there there are two things happening here if the directory source is uh, segregated into a uh, label folders mm -hmm. this will work uh, fine this will uh, this will work fine and uh, label the images and yeah. if there is, uh, if the if they are not segregated into label folders, and we provide another CSV source with key as the file name and their labels, it will merge, it will map them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I understand. I understand what you're saying. Okay. So that's that's a, that's another case, right? So you have a you have a directory, you have images that are just you know you know whatever their their file name is, right? And then you have a CSV source containing the labels, right? That's yeah, so what you're saying. Is that, yeah, uh, I I wanted both of them in the same source both ways, and doing the second way uh, may, uh, gives uh, might give a problem in uh, doing it the first way because of file name being same for label in labeled folders. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I see what you're saying. So, but then that's where I think you could just have a switch that says use the image hash, use the hash of the image, right? So, because we're talking about the first case is where we have two sources and we're appending one source to the other source and we're using all of it, right? Is that case one? Uh, can you repeat that? All right. So let me let me just write this down. So, 
and everybody else, we're definitely pretty into this, um, so if, you can definitely drop if you want. Um, so let's see. Um, okay, so case one. Um, we provide two sources. Um, one is CSV source um, with um, so CSV source contains you know like uh, basically label right um, um, and uh, label comma file name right and so we've got you know cat uh, cat a uh, key comma label and keys will be the file names okay wait a minute wait a minute okay okay so okay so key comma label okay so key is so cat one dot jpeg and then cat right okay so now this is so this is this is our CSV source for case one, right? Yes. Okay, and now what is the directory source? What does the directory source look like? So directory source will be like if, if the directory source given is data set, just a data set folder. Okay. It will uh, it will just have images. Okay. Uh, it will just have images without any labeled folders or anything. Okay, so just like cat one, like right? this, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so um so let's see what's the what's the problem here or what's like is so this is this is case one right and in this case what we're saying is that we do the merge right and well so we do the merge here and we end up with um after record dot merge uh record Cat one. You end up with image, then image array, and label cat. Yeah, so image. Yeah, okay, right? Sweet. Yes. Um, okay, so. And then case two. Case two. Um, In case two, we, are, we have label folders containing their respective images. Okay. So. But we don't use any other source. Okay, so directory source. Um, so cat. All right, and so uh, record cat one JPEG is. Um, or let's say this would be Actually, one. Actually, can you name that right? one JPEG? Yeah. yeah. And in uh, another directory will be dog, and it, that will uh, have one dot JPEG two, for example. So the key, uh, the keys will be same one dot JPEG for both these, both mm -hmm. of these records. Okay. That is the. That's issue. your main issue. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um. Okay. I can do if statements and. Uh, I mean, why don't you? Self dot web twice. So. Like so why don't why don't you just join the directory name with the image name here? Okay. I mean, I think that's, yeah, that's one option. I, that's why I wanted input from you because okay. I was very confused. Yeah. Okay. So I think. I mean, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and then. Yeah, because you'll end up you'll end up with just a bunch of uh, at the end of this loop you're going to end up with a bunch of you're going to overwrite it as soon as you hit the lex yeah, label directory. Yeah, we are not directory. not merging right. anything here, so we can yeah. have anything as yeah, in just, this case. It'll just overwrite it as soon as you get right here, right? So, um, um, so, but then so you also have this case where you wanted to do. Um, so uh, let's see. Yeah, I think your your best bet here is to join the join the um so in this case or so just um the outcome here is always or provide So if I if I join the label name uh with the 
with the image name then for unlabeled data wouldn't it be unlabeled slash one dot jpg for example um well just don't 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 do unlabeled i mean if it says unlabeled don't do it right so okay. so join image name with image unless no join property is true in config um do not join label name or do not join unlabeled with image name um and also let's see yeah okay yeah okay so i think this is a good outcome of this does this sound good to you uh, yeah i'll i'll take it i'll look and take a look into it and make changes all right cool um and then so let's see okay so um so with this um i think you pretty much had it on the right track like there's not much i can tell you here other than um let's see um so um open cv python um do, 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 do. let's see python tutorials um, but that's not the official document this isn't yeah okay oh yeah it's not yeah um, let's see the next link yeah okay Oh, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Um. Actually, inspect the, the inspect function only works mainly for uh python functions yeah it won't do it won't do um okay yeah okay this is a good yeah the, it won't do c stuff so um oh yeah uh, i just remembered they, that uh, we did a is method flatten right in util data dot pi yeah and that didn't work so i yeah so i changed the ffml config to uh, use open cv um, so it is not giving it is it is not returning a true value for is method flatten even though it has the attribute flat flatten. Okay, is it just like yeah? Is is there a, is callable or something? I think there is a callable or something. Uh, it's a is built in method there in method. that we can use. Okay, cool, great. Um, so let's see. Uh, okay um yeah okay so i don't know i mean at this point let's see um can you do um they have their doxygen documentation and is it a straight mapping i guess is the question um so what was the let's see um okay you used resize let's go look at the pr All right, wait, what is the other thing there? Basically, okay, it sounds like I'm going to, for now, let's just say no, because, um, so, we can, like, I yes, can it's, it what? With config, with config files, I can give it a try. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, right? Um, but how long is it going to take you is the question, right? So, um... I mean, what is more important here is look. You look at the timeline of your your project, right, and 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 what you want to do, and make sure that you like because this is so basically the thing is you can write config files, but so you can write config files or you can write you know just dictionaries that contain all the properties that you're going to need, right? Um, 
but then you're going to end up in this similar situation that kind of test wrapper that we talked about earlier right where you're going to have to you know everything's going to be you know you're probably going to find variations on things right so it probably makes sense to go through and do a few more of these and understand what are um, what are the types of things that you're going to need to happen here um, let's see let's just see yeah, unless they're all that. really straightforward keep on, I'll keep on adding new operations and side by side I'll try the dynamic loading stuff yeah okay because I think I think what you're gonna find out is you know unless these are very straightforward um, right, because you already have some custom stuff that you had to do yeah, here, right? Yeah, uh, this is this we can uh, comment out. You, uh, I in the resize function, I change stuff. You can see that parameters. Yeah. yeah. In locals dot items and everything mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. oh, and I notice you got the default arguments. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Um. Yeah. All right. Um, nice, nice. Um, so, yeah, if everything, I mean, if it's all ends up being like this, then obviously that's, well, then you did mean x is equal to zero. You know, that's the, the question here really is like, how, uh, what is this? Uh, this is another computer vision library. I oh, okay. just... Uh, Okay, cool. Use that for an example. Okay, cool. Um, um, and then, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, this is really the really the question here is like, how much work are you gonna have to do? And you're you'll figure that out, right? Is does it is it more work for you to write this thing that you parse some config than to just go through and write each each one, right? Because um, the goal here is we want to be able to expose a lot of these things, right? Um, yes. So, yeah. All right. Cool. Um, let's just say maybe we have some. Uh, I did that stuff so that uh, I can see where I can get with that. Yeah. The dynamic loading and stuff so that I don't have to do changes like in the size I, I was doing. Uh, I was doing interpolation by myself and not giving the user mm -hmm. uh, option. Yeah, you want to give so, the user options. So, yeah. So with these changes, we can, uh, user is given an option to uh, choose his uh, his interpolation and stuff, everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and every parameter. That sounds good. All right, and then the more okay, so we talked about this. All right, so I think we're good here. Um, and this is just a draft. So, um, yeah, is there anything you I'll want to talk about specifically on this, or I'll push more changes and. On the main issue is that I uh, in the Gitter chat I have left a oh yeah disk. and this, this doesn't is the work. main issue for now. Um. Uh, you need to pull down. Oh, yeah. Changes. What is the branch called? Oh, here we go. That works for me. What What fails for you? Uh, when I run this with data flow source, it doesn't work. Oh, when you run this with data flow source? So, what's the run command then? Uh, yeah, a second. I'll just paste it. I guess I also don't have all your images for this source, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah so let's... Maybe uh, you can use them from the MNIST. You know, uh, example. Okay. Okay. Great. And, uh, yeah, you'll need to create image one dot CSV. Oh, 
I've, that's okay. So I'll just it's read it. Uh, image one. So examples. Hey, you know what, uh, I'm dropping off. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Hagen. Have a good one. Is it's image.csv in Oh. Sorry, sorry. No worries. Um what's the um it's image file dot sh. Oh. Okay. Image to CSV. No such feature label. Um. Uh, you can actually. I just, I was I was using my own CSV so uh, made a new CSV source. You can remove the label features. Um, getting, uh, actually, we can do this later. It's getting very late. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking that too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, no worries. No worries. Um, yeah, it's just. I mean, it's just me and you at this point. Um, so, um, let's see. I, I mean, yeah. Call. Just let me know. Just let me know what the things we are that we're looking at here, and and we can debug. So, cool. All right. Thanks, Sakshan. Thank so All right. Have a good also, one. Also, uh, oh, yeah. you uh, you should write in the meeting minutes to change uh, is method to is built in. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's see. Um, change and which which one is this under? Let's see. Um, util slash data tffml util data. Let me just make a new. Let me I'll just make a new issue and ping you in it. So let's see. So. It's just a one line change. Change um uh um sorry change what? Inspect dot is method to inspect dot is built in. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. And All sorry right. For... Hey, no worries. No worries. Um, I was expecting. I was. Ex I was sort of expecting things would go along, and so I was trying to. I kind of thought it seemed like you know we've got we got some some stuff is is more debugging than other stuff, right? So that's just naturally takes longer. Most of the coding is debug debugging. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right, thank Thanks, Akshom. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah.